What's up guys, it's Victor here again. In this video, I'll be talking about the AMD Ryzen 3 processor in this HP ProBook 360 that I have right here. So if you're a graphic designer, a content creator, a video editor, or someone who needs a computer that can do more than just watching Netflix, then you definitely want to keep watching this video. Before now, AMD processors were seen as second class processors and as a second choice for people who are on a very low budget but still want to own a computer. And for most people, if presented with an AMD powered PC and Intel powered PC, they would choose the Intel powered PC over the AMD PC. But today, the narrative has changed. The AMD Ryzen 3 processor is a laptop processor that blurs the line between a great CPU and a solid budget content creation workstation and you will see why shortly. So, how good are AMD processors? Should you consider it when making your next laptop purchase? Should you consider this over an Intel based powered PC? Are AMD processors actually capable of everyday business professional and content creation workflow and tasks? All these questions and more will be answered in this video. So, let's cut to the chase and get into the video. I've been using this HP ProBook 360 powered by the AMD Ryzen 3 processor for my daily workflow which includes office and business tasks like sending and receiving emails from my boss, word processing and typing. I also use this laptop for content creation and graphics intensive tasks like video editing, photo editing and I played as fat here. So I have tested this Ryzen 3 powered laptop and have quite a lot to say about AMD processors. Processors are found in many modern electronic devices including PCs, smartphones, tablets and other handheld devices. There are three factors, in my opinion, that determine the performance, efficiency, and capability of a modern processor. And these factors include the number of cores in that processor, the manufacturing process, which is the nanometer count, and the clock speed of that processor. The AMD Ryzen 3 processor are two quad-core chips without hyper-threading, which basically means that it has four cores and can run more tasks at the same time. Its counterpart from the Intel side, the Intel Core i3 processors have dual-core hyper-threaded chips, which basically means they run fewer tasks simultaneously than the AMD Ryzen 3 processors. And as you can see from this benchmark test, the Ryzen 3 processor completely beats the Intel Core i3 and is almost on par with the Core i5 which it almost doesn't have any business with. The Ryzen 3 processor is manufactured on a 7 nanometer process which is essential not only with heat dispersion but also with lowering the stress on your power supply by only going up to 15 watts why also doing more? And yes, you also get to save some electricity units. Intel processors, on the other hand, are manufactured on a 10 nanometer process, and as you can tell by now, the smaller the nanometer process, the better. AMD Ryzen 3 processor runs at a speed of 2.7 GHz, and when pushed, it can get up to 3.7 GHz, which is essential to get more things done in the shortest period. Now, why these are based on information provided by AMD and various benchmarks and metrics online? How does it actually fare in real life? Like I said earlier, I've deeply integrated this laptop into my daily and office workflow, so I have quite a lot of experience with this HP ProBook 360 powered by the Ryzen 3 processor from AMD. First off, the thermal or heat dispersion on this laptop is impressive, and this can be attributed mainly to the 7 nanometer process used in fabricating the AMD Ryzen 3. This translates to a cooler and quieter PC when running graphic intensive tasks like editing and rendering Premiere Pro footage. As a matter of fact, this video was edited and rendered on this HP ProBook S360 laptop powered by the Ryzen 3. My workflow demands that I multitask, that is using many applications at once. Most times I have Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Microsoft Word and Google Chrome opened at the same time, and I usually switch frequently between these applications. I had no issue switching from Premiere Pro to Audition to edit video audio or switching to Adobe After Effects to create an After Effects composition and vice versa via Adobe Dynamic Link. I was able to render out a 7 minute 1080p clip with effects and color adjustment layers in 30 minutes. That's impressive. I'm particularly surprised to see an AMD processor doing and faring this fine. I used an AMD computer some time ago and the experience wasn't as fluent and smooth as other Intel devices in the same category. But please, this is so much better than most computers in this class that I've used. AMD Ryzen has greatly improved and is now a choice platform for creative enthusiasts using Ryzen powered computers for pro workloads like video creation, simulations and 3D modeling on a budget. I also found it to be more reliable as I had very few system hitches and software crashes. Now, to make sure I'm not being emotional about AMD and their Ryzen 3 processor, 
I invited a friend of mine, a professional photographer in my city, to edit a 4K or high-res raw photo with all the plugins and actions he uses on Photoshop. So, let's go. My name is Agopose Chizorum, the lead photographer and creative head of Lacho Photography. Yeah, looking at it, it gives me that impression that I should be. I mean, it's so sleek. It's, I like the screen size, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's portable and it looks, visually, it looks like something that should be fun to yeah. work with, okay. get. so let's, let me keep my expectations at, size of yeah. So, that. so far, I like the speed with which it responds to me, okay. I like the performance of the laptop, it's similar to what I work with in my studio. Um, the liquify to my plugins, liquify to my content aware crops, everything responded speedily. I think it already feels like my laptop already, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 let, let me not push. Let me not push that far. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy working with the laptop. Yeah. Here again. Here again. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of value, it's easy to make the case for AMD's Ryzen CPUs and you can get an 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 CPU starting at just $160 and that includes a cooler that works well with the CPU. Step down to 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 and they start as low as $120. AMD Ryzen 3 is a 4-core CPU combined with a modest integrated graphics solution which is what I have here is typically twice as fast as Intel's integrated graphics so for each category Intel's equivalent CPUs cost more and don't even include a cooler. AMD currently has an edge in efficiency by just about every metric as they are on a 7 nanometer process, while Intel is stuck on 10 nanometer. That means AMD's chips can be smaller and less power hungry and are just as secure as Intel with some unique features that make them truly unique. Such as memory guard, which enables real time memory encryption so that hackers can perform what's called a code boot attack to obtain user passwords and encryption keys. As a matter of fact, just recently I discovered that AMD produces or makes the processor and graphics used on the PS5 and the Xbox, two of the world's most famous game consoles. The PS5 features a custom 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU clocked at 3.5 GHz and a custom GPU based on AMD's RDNA2 architecture hardware that promises 10.28 teraflops and 36 compute units clocked at 2.23 GHz. The Xbox Series X, on the other hand, is powered by a custom 7 nanometer AMD Zen 2 CPU with 8 cores running at a nominal 3.8 GHz. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but this goes a long way to show how capable AMD processors have become. If you are looking to work with your processor performing intensive multi-threaded tasks like video editing or transcoding or heavy multitasking activities with tens of browser tabs open, AMD CPUs are more capable at the top end and most cost effective throughout the price and performance spectrum. This doesn't by any means suggest that Intel processors are bad, no. Intel processors are not bad, but you pay more for the same performance in most cases. Both AMD and Intel offer credible performance for work and play and there are many more considerations to make when buying a laptop than the CPU. So looking at individual model reviews is a must. The reason is for students who want a small profile, lightweight, capable but very affordable computer for their schoolwork. It's also for the modern businessman or the digital workforce who wants a very capable computer with modern security features. It's also for content creators who want performance by all means for their typical workflow without causing a money heist. If you're interested in getting a rising powered laptop here in Nigeria, you can easily walk into any HP partner store here in Nigeria and purchase an AMD powered HP PC. So guys, that's the AMD Ryzen 3, capable and yet underrated. Subscribe if you're not, like and share this video and don't forget to check out any one of my other videos on the screen right now. Thank you for watching this one guys and I'll see you when I see you in the next one. Peace.